a revision aid to help you revise those enzyme practicals. By now you should know that enzymes are biological catalysts and they are protein in nature. The role of enzymes therefore is to alter, usually to speed up the rate of chemical reactions and they themselves do not get changed. In these practicals, we looked at varying two factors that affect enzyme activity, the first of which was temperature. The second was pH. We were really investigating how changing the pH affected the rate of enzyme activity. Did it speed it up or did it slow it down? The first was temperature, so let's see how altering temperature affects enzyme activity. For all of the practicals on enzymes, we used one particular type of enzyme. We used catalase and the source of that catalase was fresh celery. You can also find catalase in liver and in potatoes, so some of you may have used those. The substrate was hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide will break down to give you water and oxygen. The rate of reaction was determined by measuring the volume of foam that was produced after two minutes. Now, as we are varying temperature in this practical, we have to maintain pH. So we will maintain pH at pH 9 using a buffer solution. So temperature was varied using water baths set at different temperatures, and these were checked or monitored using thermometers, and we also used an ice bath as well. Enzyme activity was tested at 0, 25, 45 and 60 degrees Celsius. Graduated cylinders were used throughout the whole of the practicals really because you could instantly determine the increase in volume just by looking at the cylinder. Five grams of freshly chopped celery was added to the graduated cylinder, as was 20 cc's of pH buffer 9. After this, two centimeters cubed of our substrate, hydrogen peroxide, was carefully placed using a syringe into a test tube and we wore safety goggles and used gloves and it's really important to remember those safety features. After this, we added two drops of washing up liquid. This traps the oxygen that's escaping and this is how we determine the rate of reaction. It's the volume of foam produced. So here we are all ready to go. We have our graduated cylinder and we have our substrate in the test tube on the right. Before mixing, always ensure that you have placed the graduated cylinder and the test tube with the hydrogen peroxide into the water bath and let them sit for a few moments just so that they both come to that temperature. When you're happy or satisfied that both have reached the desired temperature, then you can add the hydrogen peroxide to the graduated cylinder. After this, note the volume and write it down. Quickly replace back into the water bath and after two minutes, note the volume again. For each temperature, you will do this three times. The whole process gets repeated for the whole range of temperatures you've decided to test. When you finish the practical, it should be apparent that one of the temperatures produced quite a lot more foam than all of the others and this was your optimum temperature. So when you're satisfied and you've got all your results in your table, then you can start to draw your graph. And your graph should hopefully look something like this. After all your work, you should have determined that 25 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature for catalase activity, particularly catalase sourced in celery. Let's look now at pH and how changing or altering the pH affects catalase activity. To alter pH, you simply use a different buffer solution and we used 4, 7, 9 and 10. If you're varying or altering pH, then you have to maintain temperature and the temperature was maintained at 25 degrees Celsius, the optimum for catalase. Temperature was maintained using a water bath and that water bath was monitored using a thermometer. Five grams of freshly chopped celery was added to our graduated cylinder and also the desired buffer solution, 20 cc's. So here we have our graduated cylinder all ready to go with the buffer solution and the celery. To this, two drops of washing up liquid is added and the purpose of the washing up liquid is to catch the oxygen being released and to create a foam. Once again, our substrate is hydrogen peroxide and two centimetres cubed of that is carefully placed into a test tube and we used a syringe and we wore gloves and goggles. 
we allowed both our substrate, the hydrogen peroxide and the graduated cylinder to sit in the water bath for a few moments before mixing just to get them at the same temperature. Once we were happy, the hydrogen peroxide was added to the graduated cylinder containing our celery, the source of our catalase. We immediately noted the volume. The graduated cylinder was then returned to the water bath and after two minutes, the volume was read again. For each of those different pH values, a different volume of foam was produced. Then you graphed your results and hopefully your graph looked a little like this. Note the higher peak and the narrower base as compared with the temperature graph. Hopefully your results showed that the greatest volume of foam was produced when buffer pH 9 was used. So pH 9 must be the optimum pH for catalase activity, particularly when the catalase is sourced in fresh celery. The last practical looks at the effect of denaturation on enzyme activity and you should know that a denatured enzyme cannot catalyse a reaction. During this practical, the temperature was maintained at 25 degrees Celsius using a water bath and checked with a thermometer. The pH was maintained at pH 9 using a buffer solution. Once again, hydrogen peroxide was our substrate. Celery was our source of our enzyme catalase. We used fresh celery for our control. And boiled celery was for our test. Boiling the celery for 10 minutes denatures the catalase. The same procedure is followed. I'm not going to go through the whole thing again, but basically the only difference is that instead of fresh celery, you have boiled celery. So the apparatus or the graduated cylinder with the fresh celery, the hydrogen peroxide and the buffer and the washing up liquid produced a lot of foam. And that containing the boiled celery, it produced no foam because the enzyme was denatured. It was not able to catalyze the reaction. Boiling denatured the enzyme catalase. It altered its three dimensional shape, its globular shape, and it was no longer able to catalyze any reaction. Enzymes will always appear somewhere on the Leaving Cert paper, so it's really worth your while. It's a wise investment to learn them. Best of luck.